grace and peace to you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I welcome you to worship this morning here at Bethlehem. We've called it Sing at Home Sunday. We've called it Sing Along Sunday. We've called it Sing From Home Sunday. Whatever you want to call it, we're glad that you're here, and we look forward to enjoying many of our uh, traditional Christmas carols this morning, some special music. It's going to be a great hour. I just have one announcement as part of our community time. I want to remind you of the offerings that we will have on Thursday for Christmas Eve. Uh, We will have a virtual service that will be available to you to use at any time on Christmas Eve or Christmas Day if you'd like. Uh, We will be uh, streaming a service here from the sanctuary complete with a string quartet beginning at 840. That service will begin at 9. Uh, I want to remind you that we'll be sharing communion together at that service, so please uh, be prepared with your own uh, juice and bread at home so that we can celebrate that together. And then the wild card is 5 o'clock. We hope that we'll be able to uh, meet in the parking lot for a service there. Uh, That will be weather dependent. All this information will come out to you in a special uh, Emily's edition on Christmas Eve. Uh, Look for that email before noon. It will give you all the ways to connect with us for worship and will also let you know whether or not that five o'clock service is on. I'd like to invite you now to join me for our call to worship. All creation holds its breath. The time is almost here. The choir of angels waits for its cue to sing. Excitement is all around us. Prepare your hearts. Emmanuel, God with us, is coming. Our hearts are ready for the coming of Christ. Love made real.
Despite its challenges, this year has not been without opportunities to spot love in action. From healthcare workers holding visual when families cannot gather for final moments, to teachers moving heaven and earth to make schools safe and comforting for children, to drive-by parades to celebrate special milestones, to cards in the mail and phone calls just to check in. We have enveloped one another with love in the face of tremendous adversity. And what a happy surprise that is love made real through endless kindness is but a fraction of the love that will come to us in a few short days in the word made flesh. We light once more the love candle, waiting for the light that is to come, a light the darkness cannot touch. And we will now place our flame for our love candle on the sign. And I hope that you will do the same at your home sometime this afternoon. Please join me now for our first scripture reading for today, which comes from the second book of Samuel. Now, when the king was settled in his house and the Lord had given him rest from all his enemies around him, the king said to the prophet Nathan, See now, I am living in a house of cedar, but the ark of God stays in a tent. Nathan said to the king, Go, do all that you have in mind, for the Lord is with you. But that same night the word of the Lord came to Nathan, Go and tell my servant David, Thus says the Lord, Are you the one to build me a house to live in? I have not lived in a house since the day I brought up the people of Israel from Egypt to this day, but I have been moving about in a tent and a tabernacle. Wherever I have moved about among all the people of Israel, did I ever speak a word with any of the tribal leaders of Israel, whom I commanded to shepherd my people Israel, saying, Why have you not built me a house of cedar? Now, therefore, thus you shall say to my servant David, Thus says the Lord of hosts, I took you from the pasture, from following the sheep, to be prince over my people Israel. And I have been with you wherever you went, and have cut off all your enemies from before you. And I will make for you a great name, like the name of the great ones of the earth. And I will appoint a place for my people Israel and will plant them so that they may live in their own place and be disturbed no more. And evildoers shall afflict them no more as formerly from the time that I appointed judges over my people Israel. And I will give you rest from all your enemies. Moreover, the Lord declares to you that the Lord will make you a house your house and your kingdom shall be made sure forever before me. Your throne shall be established forever. May God help us to learn from this reading today.
Our second scripture reading for this morning comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 1. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now... Your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. May God add a blessing to the reading of God's word today.
As we turn our attention now to prayer, I invite you to take a look at that list that we send out in an email each week, uh, look at the concerns of our church family, and I know that you probably have some uh, personal prayer requests that you might want to add to that list this morning. Uh, we trust that God hears the needs of our hearts and the needs of our community. Let us go now to God in prayer. Dear God, we thank you for the ways that you have made for us, that we are able to worship together this morning, even as we are apart. We sing from home, uniting our voices through your spirit to celebrate the love that the Christ child brings to the world. We continue to wait, O oh God, eagerly for Christmas Day. Be with your people throughout the world, reminding us all that despite the many challenges before us, your goodness remains. Bring healing to the sick, comfort to the grieving, peace to the conflicted, joy to the downtrodden, and hope to the hopeless. Come, Lord Jesus. And now we unite our hearts and our voices to pray the prayer that Christ taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
And now may the love of God that comes to us in the Christ child feel real to you today. And may you continue to find ways to offer that love in creative new ways even during this strange time. May the love of God keep you as we wait just a few more days for the birth of the Christ child. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, be at peace today. Amen.